So I'm sure you've seen these types of charts all over the corona coverage during this pandemic. And we're told that they use what's called a log scale. But what is a log scale? And why use it for these charts? Come with me and we're going to find out. This is Health Stats in Quarantine. Yes, welcome to Health Stats IQ. My name is Justin Zoltzer and I run a website called zstatistics.com and I thought I'd get busy while I'm in isolation here producing a few health stats educational videos. As you can see, we've got quite a few here for you to check out. But today's lesson is all about the log scale. It's going to be a quick one, so let's dive straight in. All right, so the way this is going to progress is we're going to look at the basics of the logarithmic scale, getting you familiar with how it actually works. And then we're going to apply it to that graph we saw before and have a look at some COVID-19 data. After which we'll see how logarithms are used in related fields to health. And this is actually quite interesting, so I'd, I'd recommend sticking around for that. But diving into the basics first, I've started you off just with a boring old linear scale. Just your cheeky one, two, three, four, five. The thing we need to realize is that consecutive values on this linear scale represent an increase of one unit. And in the instance of going from one to two, that actually represents a full 100% increase because we've gone from one and you've added on a full 100% of that to get to two. Now for the next stage, we're going from two to three. And again, that's just one straight unit. But hopefully you can appreciate that the proportionate increase or the percentage increase is only going to be 50% here because we've gone from two to three. And if two is the original value, you're only adding on 50% of that to get to three. And on we go. You can see that the higher we go on this linear scale, the lower the proportionate increase each time. All right, Justin, enough foreplay. Let's get into it. What do logs mean? Well, here's a similar linear scale, but I'm just omitting quite a few of the values. So here's 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. Now, the corresponding points on a logarithmic scale might be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And what this log scale is going to keep track of is the number of doublings that have occurred from one. Did you catch that? So zero on this log scale means we're going no doublings from one. One on a log scale means yes, we've doubled from one and we've gotten to two. A log value of two means yes, let's double twice. So we go one and we double it to two and we double it to four. So this log scale is effectively a counter of the number of doubles we've completed, starting from the number one. But the beauty of this log scale is that each consecutive increase we do now represents, yes, a doubling, but it also represents a consistent proportionate increase because a doubling just represents an increase of 100%, right? So if we go from zero to one, that's an increase of 100%. If we go from 1 to 2, again, that's an increase of 100%. 2 to 3, the same. Because they're counting doublings. So we now have a scale which has a consistent proportionate increase all the way along its length. And you can actually show that going from a log value of 2.5 to 3.5 is also an increase of 100%. So this really is consistent throughout the scale. Now, those of you that have dealt with logs before will be telling me, Justin, this is a very particular log scale. In fact, we would say this is the log scale base two. And indeed, this is a particular log scale where we have two as the base. Because I hope you can appreciate, we didn't need to use this whole doubling mechanism. Imagine this log scale, this is a new log scale. Imagine zero represents one on the linear scale. And each time we go up a value on the log scale, we're actually tripling. In that case, this would be log to the base 3. But the same property applies because with each increment on the log scale, we have a consistent proportionate increase in that we're tripling with each successive value of this log scale. Now, neither log to the base 2 nor log to the base 3 get used that often. 
one particular log scale gets used a lot and that's log to the base 10. So the same principle applies, it just means that each value of the log scale is actually multiplying by 10 each time. And there's the extra convenience here of just being able to count the number of zeros. So for example, 4 on the log scale just means 10,000 on the linear scale. In other words, a 1 with 4 zeros. So the big takeaway here is that a log scale maintains its proportionality all the way through the scale. And that really is the big, big thing to take away. So if we're going to dive now into having a look at the plot from the COVID-19 analysis, this comes from the Financial Times, in particular, John Byrne Murdoch, and you can see his Twitter handle down there. So what this is showing us is the number of daily deaths with coronavirus. And it's done a seven day rolling average, which we don't really need to worry about too much. But effectively, it's like a smoothed form of the daily deaths for each country. So you can see that the x-axis here is just a linear scale. The number of days since that threshold of three deaths has passed. So quite clearly, China's got the longest time scale here because it passed three deaths way back in the beginning of the crisis. So if you look at the y-axis here, you can see that the scale is certainly not linear. So what's going on? Well, it's actually a log to the base 10 scale. Realistically, what they've done is they've put zero down the bottom here. By the time it gets to 10, we might call that one on the log scale. 100, we'll call that two on the log scale. And 1000, we'll call that three on the log scale. Now, as you can see, all of those points are evenly spaced along this axis. Now, the cheeky thing that this graph does is it doesn't leave the values in log form because who's going to really want to see Oh, the US has now eclipsed a log value of three. We'd never want to see that. So what they do is they convert it back to the linear values, albeit keeping the log scale. So instead of zero, one, two, three, they keep it at one, 10, 100, and 1,000. And then what happens is they fill in little bits in between to give you a bit more information. But because of that log scale, they're not going to work out very neatly necessarily. And it might surprise you to see that the 500, for example, is a lot closer to 1,000 than it is to the 100. But again, that's just due to that log scale that we had before. So the beauty of doing this is threefold. We get three wonderful benefits of using a log scale. Firstly, it allows us to put countries like the US, who have more than 1,000 deaths per day, on the same plot as countries like Japan and South Korea that have only about five deaths per day at the moment. The second benefit is what I like to call consistency. And what I mean by that is that a movement of say this distance down the bottom of the chart is actually equivalent in significance to that same distance movement in the top of the chart. So let's just say this little bump that South Korea experienced at around day 35. It's a small little bump here, but you can see it's about the same size as the bump that China experienced around day 20. Now, those two bumps represent the same proportionate increase in daily deaths for both South Korea and China at the time. And even apart from comparing little jumps in the bottom and the top of the scale, we also therefore know that gradients are directly comparable at the top and the bottom of the scale as well. They represent the same rate of increase. So parallel lines mean countries experiencing the same growth rate. And the third major benefit is that a straight diagonal line has a very important meaning. When these countries are traveling along a straight diagonal line, that indicates what's called exponential growth. It means that day by day, we're experiencing the same proportionate increase which is actually a really scary prospect when you think about it. So when these curves start to flatten away from a straight line, we can tell that the growth is becoming less than exponential. And that's obviously a really good thing for the country. Although even better for the country will be when it turns a corner and stops increasing, like Spain and Italy now seem to have done. So it's for these three reasons that we like using a log scale when we deal with coronavirus cases, and in this case, coronavirus deaths. And you're just not going to get that from a linear plot. All right, so with that done, let's have a look now and see what other uses of log scales there are. 
but I've come up with four very common examples where log scales are used. One is in measurement of volume, in acidity, measuring the strength of earthquakes, and also something quite new in terms of the scale at least, is to use it to measure radioactivity. So let's take each one of these in turn. For volume, you might have heard of a scale called decibels. Now decibels tend to range from about 0 to say 120, 130, but with each increase of 10 on that scale, it's actually a proportionate increase where we multiply by 10 times the power each time. So a sound that has 70 decibels is 10 times the power of a sound that has 60 decibels, which itself is 10 times the power of a 50 decibel sound. Acidity is also measured on a log scale with each decrease in one unit on the pH scale, so going from 7 to 6 or 6 to 5, you're actually multiplying by 10 times the hydrogen ion concentration. Earthquakes, I'm sure you can tell me that earthquakes are measured on the Richter scale, but this one's actually quite cool. For each increase in 2 on the Richter scale, it actually represents an increase in a thousand times the equivalent energy release from TNT. So an earthquake of four on the Richter scale is equivalent to a kiloton of TNT. An earthquake on the Richter scale of six is equivalent to the release of a thousand kilotons of TNT or a megaton. And if you go another two up to a, an earthquake of eight on the scale, that's a thousand megatons, or in other words, a gigaton of equivalent energy from the from a TNT explosion. So that's actually quite interesting. I like that one. Now, radioactivity, this one's fresh off the press because only a few years ago, there was uh, an article suggesting a logarithmic scale for radioactivity, and it's called the RAIN scale. I'll put a reference to the, the paper in the description of the video, but an increase in one on this RAIN scale, again, is an increase in 10 times what's called the, the millisievert which is essentially a measure of radiation. So that's it, people. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. My name's Justin Zeltzer. If you want to see any of these videos, you can check them out on zstatistics.com. But if you wanted to do something for me, you can hit the like button and subscribe and do all those kind of things and show a friend as well. I hope you're staying safe out there and keeping in contact with relatives. It's a weird time to be alive. I hope you're okay. Ciao.